Hi, I'm Lee English from Bowser Manufacturing, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about what happens in Bowser. We have, uh, what we're in right now is our mold setup room. You can see we have to have an overhead crane because some of the molds get very heavy. If you look on the table, that is a mold base that will make one Alco Century locomotive, either an M liner, a a C628, they all fit in here. Up at the top, you have the main body, and down at the bottom, this is where we would mold the cab. <coughs> what we do is we change a lot of these pieces in here into things like this. This is the M630, I'd have to, M636, and the cutouts in here hold these different pieces so that we can vary them and show every version of the locomotive. Over here, this is fuel tanks. Actually, this is the C636 fuel tanks. You can see there's inserts in these pockets, all kinds of little things. Here's a case of N scale, N5C and N5 caboose parts. These are the cupola parts. You can see the shape. These are some of the small parts. Smokestack, roof, ends. This little pocket would hold the brake wheels. Over on the shelf, on these shelves, are more storage boxes for all the different pieces that go in these molds. This is a typical mold that we would put in our machine to make train car bodies. Here's a AS16 parts, end trucks, steward parts, trolley parts. This is a universal base. Over in here, we have RS3 fuel tanks. If you come in closer, you'll see F units. Lots of different F unit molds. This was all done by Kato in Japan. Down here we have RS3. These are unit frame molds. You can see some of the little parts that we're going to be doing. Down here is another set of molds. This is the cab walks and other miscellaneous parts. And this is a universal base that we will be doing a lot of the handrails. Typically, we get our plastic in in bags or in big, big barrels, and then it looks something like this. It's pellets. Now the noise you hear in the background is air compressors and other machinery that we need to have to make our mold shots. Here's some more molds. The noise is the green machine that cools the uh, antifreeze we put through the molds. Some plastics, this, this machine is what's called a dryer. Some plastics suck moisture into themselves and when we put it through the machine it creates a lot of steam. <coughs> we can't have the steam. It makes everything look like an orange peel. Everyone needs a cement mixer. We get the color, we get the pellets in in a neutral color and we mix a handful of concentrate in and this mixes it. These are all barrels of reground plastic so that we can, I, we want to recycle as much as possible. And here's a whole different kind of molds. These molds make, here's boxcar doors. These are molds to make, these are the inserts for the trucks. So we can make all the different kinds of trucks. Now we're gonna move into the molding room. It's quieter in here. In here what we have is we have, he's setting up to mold end scale bodies and parts. And this one, is set up to make trucks. 
I believe if we come in the back, we'll be able to see in the machine and watch it open and close. It takes about 25 seconds. And then the parts fall out, he has to check the mold, and then it'll cycle again. And that'll drop the parts down. Let's move around to the other side of the machine. What happens to the machine, he is just, right now he's just setting this machine up. You can see what we're making here. This is N scale cabooses. So what you have is we have a barrel of plastic down here. And that's been dried to about 175 degrees for about four hours. It is sucked up into the, up to here, and you can see through the glass, that's where the pellets go. And then it goes through this hot barrel, all the way through there, and it's heated to 450 degrees. And you can see that it's an all computerized controlled machine. So we can set all kinds of parameters and there can be lots of things done. And on this wall you have more molds. So that's just a brief tour of Bowser molding department and thank you very much. I'm Lee English again and this is where we do our artwork and setup. This is Scott Davis. Uh, some people may recognize him. He goes to most of the shows. He's creating Northern Pacific artwork for the RS3. He's got a couple screens and he will, he will actually generate all the art that goes onto our cars. And he also will inspect everything that comes through when we get new projects through. He's, he's the guy that will do 99% of all the inspection to make sure what you get is right. And I'm going to lay it on him, not me. So anyway, this is our this is our repair room, our pad printing, and this is Candy. She's been around a little bit. She's been with us a little while. We're pad printing Z scale parts. The ink is in the cup. And as the cup moves back and forth, it leaves the ink in an impression. And then the pad stamps it and transfers it to the car. You notice that the bottom cable moves around and it's controlled by, the, by a computer to move into the right place. And would you hold that up please, Candy? Thank you, thank you. And that is basically, that is how most of your model trains are decorated with pad printing.